Good morning. Pastor Sean here on Saturday, May 15th, with your morning prayer. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen, the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O come, let us worship him. All right, what we got today? Today we have Luke 18, verses 1 through 17. And he told them a parable to the effect that they ought to always pray and not lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused, but afterward he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice, so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge says. And will not God give justice to his elect? Who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like these, like other men, extortioners, unjust adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to this house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Now they were bringing infants to him, that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they rebuked him. But Jesus called to them, saying, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. In many and various ways God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days he has spoken to us by his son. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so... Three different things going on. Um, let's see. Let's kind of pick pick whatever uh, jumps out at you, I guess. Um, you know, certainly one of the, one of the more well known is is the uh, Pharisee and a tax collector. Um, you know how and you know the, it's nice because Jesus says it at the very top. This is the problem with this is that um, the Pharisee thought he was righteous and treated others with contempt. Um, and so, you know, the Pharisee is, is um, the one who thinks he's righteous according to how, how good he is, um, how well he keeps the law. And meanwhile, the tax collector, he's the one who goes home justified because he is the one who does not puff himself up, does not, um, you know, speak of himself <laughs> highly at all. He humbles himself and says, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And, and he goes home justified. So very, very, very uh, familiar and, and a lot of favorites, uh, or a lot of people consider that one their one of their favorites. Um, certainly, let let the children come to me. Let the uh, bringing the infants. Seeing that uh, Jesus says that you know the kingdom of God belongs to infants, uh, which is a, a nice little um, segue into a discussion about uh, infant baptism and uh, what God, God calls us to uh, to faith even. Even when we are babies and you know don't understand what's going on, but it's because it's not about what we think. Just like the justification was not about keeping the law, uh, faith is not about um, being able to f sort it out. You know, on, on your own power of your own will, it is a gift. It is given to you. So is that. Um, but I, you know, I, I like the the first section. Um, the the uh, judge <laughs> who. Um, 
you know, Jesus talks about this judge who, you know, he doesn't care about God. He doesn't care about other people. He's, he's an unrighteous judge. He's not a great guy at all. And yet uh, this woman, who is one of his constituents, um, keeps coming to him and say, give me justice, give me justice. And he keeps sending her away, but she keeps coming back and hounding him. And finally he just gives in and says, oh, you know what? I'm just going to give her what she wants just to get her to leave me alone. And then uh, I love how he got, uh, Jesus uses this example to show us, you know, to contrast with God and say, like, look, if even this this low life of a judge is able to answer a prayer, essentially, and, and give a person what, what they seek, what they need, um, how much more will God do that? You know, he loves you. <laughs> of course, he, he hears you and will give you what you need. Um, and, of course, we need to hear this because... Yeah, you know, we often go to God with our our desires, with our needs, um, and we we don't often see the fruits of that, or or maybe maybe not often, but maybe every once in a while, whatever. Maybe it's maybe it's a lot. Maybe we we don't think He's hearing us at all, and that He's ignoring us, that He's um, denying us what we need, um, and so in this parable here, Jesus uh, tells us that no, God hears everything god has received every single prayer of yours and um if you think he's um not going to give you justice quickly i mean you're wrong <laughs> of course he will and um you know this gets into a, a situation of well but god doesn't answer my prayers or you know sometimes he tells me wait sometimes it's not in his time and in one sense we can say well yeah in, in some of the things we ask for there's um there's certainly an element of timing involved. So like if somebody's sick and we're asking for healing, you know, that could take time, you know? And so we want healing, boom, right now. And and God is hearing our prayer and he's answering it with like, not yet, not yet. I will bring healing in my time. And so we look at, you know, where, where Jesus says, I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. And we're like, but will he? <laughs> it doesn't always feel like it. It doesn't always seem like it. Um, but when you look at, um, this whole text here, this, this section, um, he's not talking about going to God in prayer, um, to ask for the things we need or the things we want, you know, let all your desires known, be known to God. He's not referring to that because if you look and you know, what's the next thing about, it's about faith. It's about justification. It's about being made righteous. What's the next one about little children being made righteous, you know? being a part of the kingdom. So, and even in his wording, he says, um, with God, I will tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Um, and so when we look at that, when we go to God in prayer and we, we ask for things like, you know, forgiveness, um, to be brought near to him, um, things having to do with faith and justification and righteousness, um, Yes, you know, we don't always feel righteous. Don't always feel justified. <laughs> um, certainly, don't always feel that our faith is strong. You know, we're, we're we're tested so often and just so often feel that you know, like, well, where is God? He doesn't feel close to me. Whatever. But the thing is, um, God gives His justice speedily, and He's already given His justice and declared you righteous through Jesus Christ. He's already given you His Son, Jesus Christ. And so, um, before we even go to God to ask Him for justice, to to pester Him to say, "Lord, you know, give me, <laughs> give me my, give me, give me justice in this," um, He's already done it. Um, you know, He's so fast; it, it's already happened <laughs> two thousand years ago. In fact. Um, he has already made you righteous. He has already justified you. He has uh, forgiven you in Jesus Christ. Um, he answers that prayer of where he is by by baptizing you, by sending his Holy Spirit into you so that he, he says, I'm always with you. I'm, I'm there with you right now. Um, and we say, well, I, I, don't, I don't feel it, God. Where are you? And he says, listen to my words. <laughs> I am with you. Um, I forgive you. I love you. Uh, my word is with you. And if my word is with you, my son is with you. He kisses. He is my word. Um, so it's a, it's a it's a great great reminder to us um, that you know <laughs> it's not always a matter of you know God's timing. It's not our timing. Like, yes, that's true. 
sometimes it's way better than our timing. Um, and especially when it involves Jesus Christ, when it involves our faith, when it involves forgiveness, when it involves our justification, our standing before him, our righteousness. God's timing is so much better than ours because it's already happened. It's already come to us. And we get to delight in that. So we don't have to pray wondering when God is going to answer that prayer. Our prayer, when it involves things of faith, are have already been answered, have already been delivered. Um, we are praying God to strengthen and, and open our eyes to what he has already delivered. And uh, that's, that's a nice thing. All right, well, let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you've safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for taking your time today, all these mornings, to, uh, to have this morning devotional to uh, begin your day in prayer. And uh, I, I thank you for uh, joining me in it. So have a wonderful, wonderful Saturday, and uh, peace be with you.